Hello and welcome to Dan Makes Things. My name is Dan and for the last few years I've been building a companion robot. This is part three in a build log around upgrading the robot to utilize the new Raspberry Pi 5. Let me talk you through the changes that have happened since the last video. I've been doing some work to try and work out whether the compatibility of the Raspberry Pi 5 is going to make integration easier or harder. Now, unfortunately, it's a little bit of a mixture of both. So you may have seen in the previous videos that I've been putting together a custom PCB. Uh, this is not it, this is the old version, and actually I've wired this up in a slightly different way just so that I could test NeoPixels on the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, but what we're gonna do is take something that has similar functionality and attach it along the side of the Raspberry Pi uh, so that I can use this for the head of the robot. The new PCB is on order and it's coming from JLC PCB. Uh, it should be here in a few days. So before that, I wanted to take you through what I actually have changed since the last video and how I'm planning on assembling it. I've adjusted the layout slightly and I've included the ability to have five NeoPixels on board. The reason for that is I'd like them to be able to be used for status LEDs so that we can change the color and the frequency and brightness based on the requirements of the board at the current time. So for example, one could show the status of the Wi-Fi or could show the status of the microphones or any of those other things uh, that's useful for debugging without having to go in and take a look at the logs. Now in order to make that work, I've ordered some parts. This is my first attempt at using surface mounted components. And what we have here is the surface mounted NeoPixels. So each of these small white elements are the NeoPixels themselves. And they comprise of three LEDs and a controller. Now in order to include them on the board, you need to be able to solder surface mounted components because there are no legs to solder through. And as you can see here, they are very small and on the back of them, you actually have the contacts that need to make contact with the PCB. So you do that using solder paste. I have some here. So you can square that out onto the PCB. You can either use a stencil, uh, which allows you to just apply the paste to the right parts of the board, or you can just do it manually. It just takes a little bit more time and is a little bit harder to do accurately. And once you've done that, you then place the components on the board and then heat it. And there are a few different ways you can heat it. One of the ways that I'm going to try this time is to use one of these heat pads. Uh, the way that this works is you plug it into a 20 volt USB-C power supply and you allow it to heat up to a specific temperature that is hotter than the melting point of the solder paste. And at that point, all of the components that are sat on top of the paste should reorient themselves uh, as the solder melts. And all you need to do is just make sure that they've aligned correctly. Uh, now I'm going to give that a go because I haven't done this before, uh, but in theory it should be okay. One of the other things that I needed in order to facilitate this was to include some decoupling capacitors. Uh, so looking at the data sheet for these specific NeoPixels, they do need decoupling capacitors included. So again, I've ordered those as well, as you can see there. And hopefully that should be achievable, although these are very, very small. I'm currently using an I squared C to NeoPixel driver board, uh, but unfortunately the availability of that board is quite poor and I haven't been able to find a suitable replacement. What I wanted to do was test to see whether I could get the NeoPixels working directly on the Raspberry Pi 5 without having to disable audio, because a lot of the guides state that you need to disable audio in order to have the NeoPixels working. But the challenge is it's unclear whether that's just for a specific pin or whether that's for any of the pins that will support the NeoPixels. So I assembled this, which is a test board. It has a logic level converter to convert to 3.3 volts and 5 volts, because the signal for the NeoPixels must be 5 volts, and the Raspberry Pi is a 3.3 volt board. Uh, and I plugged this in so that I could test um, the NeoPixels. The problem is there is an issue with the Raspberry Pi 5 Python drivers for the NeoPixels at the moment which means that this can't be tested. So I will test that once those drivers have been updated, which should happen sometime in the new year. Until then, the I2C interface should work well, and when the new PCB comes, I'll be able to test that out and let you know. Other components I have in place that I'm waiting to test, I have an I2S audio amplifier, and I also have an I2S MEMS microphone. Now I used these MEMS microphones in the previous version 
uh, and what I'm looking to do is continue that, but I do need to test to see whether both of these, as they're both I squared S, can be used at the same time without any issues. And then further to that, I need to make sure that once these are working, the NeoPixels work as well. So there's going to be a lot of testing, but I'm waiting for the PCB to arrive before I do any more work on that, rather than creating a, a prototype board just for the sake of waiting a few more days. One of the other elements that I wanted to put in place was the ability to power the Raspberry Pi through any voltage up to 20 volts. Um, and so I have assembled a module here. This is a USB-C power delivery board, and this specific one will accept any voltage via USB-C power delivery up to 20 volts. Uh, and we'll pass that directly to this DC to DC buck converter that will bring it down to the 5.1 volts that are required. Uh, this output will be connected to the Raspberry Pi via the custom PCB, and then we'll be able to test and make sure that everything works as expected. I've also been working on testing out the existing camera on the Raspberry Pi 5, and what I'm finding is that there are some firmware or software limitations around quite a lot of the functionality that I did have working on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. For example, the Raspberry Pi 5, when I initially started testing, didn't support this version of the camera. Now this is a third-party camera, it isn't an official Raspberry Pi camera, but it uses the same hardware. And so Raspberry Pi very kindly created a fix, and that fix involves a firmware update that updates to a specific pull request from their source. Now in future, this pull request will be merged and shouldn't be included in any of the firmware updates, uh, but for now, it's something that you must do specifically. If you're interested in this or you're experiencing this problem yourself, there is a guide on the website that talks you through the workaround and how to apply it to your Raspberry Pi. The plan is to make a slim 3D printed head that incorporates all of these components in a similar way to the existing version. So I'm planning on having the camera coming around and displaying at the front of the board. I'm planning on having NeoPixel LEDs as I have done before via the I2C interface, which will be integrated into the PCB. I'm planning on having the PCB, but rather than being over the top as a hat, I'm going to put it down the side because we actually have space down the side uh, and we can use one of these 90 degree um, header adapters to allow that to happen. And then finally, on the opposite side, we're going to have the DC to DC converter. The current plan is to allow all of these components to be visible rather than hidden away within the 3D printed plastic. That will make it easier to talk about and demonstrate when I take it to events. There's also a plan to integrate a servo in this version, so the PCB has space for that servo, and that should allow for some sort of animation on the head, regardless of whether it's connected to the body or the neck or not. One other thing about this power adapter is that I have set it up so that I can add two more wires into these empty sockets here and that will enable me to connect directly to the power coming from the body once this is attached to the body. And that means that I can either accept power through this USB-C adapter or directly from the body when the head is attached. I've also been working on integrating Veeam, which is a framework that allows fast prototyping of smart machines and robots. Their support of the Raspberry Pi 5 is also a little bit limited at the moment because it's so new but fortunately, the team's done a great job of coming up with workarounds and solutions, and they now prioritize support of the Raspberry Pi 5 and are actively working on fixes for any of the issues. I'm hoping to integrate that more fully in the next version, and I'll talk about that more in a future video. If you're interested in helping out or building a version of your own, take a look at the community and the wiki pages linked in the description. That's everything for now. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to Dan Makes Things, and against my better judgement, I'm still building a companion robot.